Now there's a pretty decent chance that installing your CPU is actually the easiest thing that you will do when you're building a computer. We're gonna unbox this, get it installed here into Project 7, and you'll see this really is super simple. This is the Project 7 series, a long form look at how to build your own gaming system. If you are interested in this kind of gaming performance content, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, maybe even consider subscribing. To see behind the scenes details, a parts list, and some blog content, check out thegraintech.com for more information. All right, so we're gonna open the box itself. You can see, as with all of these components, these are sealed. I have not opened them. I have resisted that temptation, and we are closing in on probably the hardest thing to resist just opening, which is the GPU. So I'm simply going to cut along this edge right here. That loosens this piece of tape, and that gives me access actually to the contents of the box. You see it's just a simple flip lid, just like that. The chip is on the back. Now you want to make sure that the box itself is intact. No dents, no damage to the cardboard, because you want to make sure that this was treated properly from the factory all the way to your doorstep. Slide the chip out. You will note the majority of this is air. Frito-Lay would be jealous. To actually get the chip out, it's simply a matter of just pulling apart the cardboard itself. There's no real magic to that part. There we have it. Now do note, in the box there is a nice Intel sticker. Up to you. Some people like to install the stickers on their cases. There certainly was a time that I would. Here is the processor inside of a ESD protected set of plastic. This also helps to prevent shock damage. It is form fitted to the processor itself so that it cannot move inside of this container, which is really important. It ensures a reliable product is being delivered to you. Before I continue, I am going to put on my ESD wristband, just like that. Now we are ready to open the case. This is simply a matter of folding and bending one slight corner and then popping it open, just like that. When you actually take out the processor, let's take note of a few things. This right here is called the integrated heat spreader. The chips, the actual cores inside of here are getting so small that they had to come up with an additional way to get heat away from such a small area to a wider area, ultimately to the widest area, which is your heat sink. This can be removed in a process called delitting. Super high-end overclockers will do that sort of thing. They will open this up, put in a different thermal solution inside, put the top back on, and then actually mount a heatsink. You don't have to worry about that, thankfully. I do highly encourage you to look through the entire chip. There are surface mounted devices all throughout both sides of the PCB. You absolutely want to make sure that the chip itself is in good condition and good quality before you install it in your machine just to avoid some of the hassle of having to RMA, take a part out, take the heat sink off, etc., which can be a bit of a hassle. So you want to give both sides a good examination, turn it so that the light hits a lot of the components, and make sure that everything looks clean and well attached. So I don't see anything wrong with this chip. And see anything whatsoever. Now the installation process is super simple. There are two grooves located on the sides of the processor. Those are going to line up with the socket inside the motherboard itself. You're simply going to set the chip down inside of those grooves and then you are going to close the lever over top of it. So let's go ahead and get to the getting. If you enjoy gaming performance content, consider clicking that like button, maybe even subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, please visit patreon.com slash thegraingtech to learn how you can help me pay it forward. Right here, you can see the socket holding arm. 
we are going to pull that back and that releases the bracket itself. And inside here is the actual part that the CPU goes on. Right here and right here are those two notches. The CPU is going to face word print towards the top of the case. So if you were to try to read this left to right, you would need to face the bottom of the case and look this way. We simply take this, drop it in, close our heat sink shield, and by the time I press this down, that'll pop off. Just like that, you can discard this protector. No longer needed, but you might wanna keep it should you need to send the motherboard back or should you need to do anything that requires taking that processor out. It does act as a good shield. Literally, that is all it takes to physically install the processor. Let's do one more step while we are here and that is connect the CPU four pin to the motherboard and to the PSU. Take note, there are two sides. You're gonna note that the side that is split is the side that actually goes to the processor. The side that is solid is the part that goes to the PSU itself. If you are going for ultra high overclocking, you can use all 12 pins that the PSU and the motherboard are capable of supplying. It uses a four pin and it uses an eight pin. In this instance, we're not going for super high extreme overclocking. So I am just going to use the traditional eight pin layout right here. Now this gets plugged in right at the top of the motherboard. This is pretty consistent across almost every brand I have seen. As close to the CPU as can be is where these connectors tend to live. Also pretty much standard, the clip side is facing out of the motherboard. That's another way to make sure that you are aligning things properly. Haha, -ha, success. This cable right here is what we will plug into the power supply. There is a CPU port identified on the PSU that you will plug this into. Purposes of cable management, I'm going to feed it through the top, just like this. That's gonna get it in the proper position. And I haven't started cable managing everything yet, but this does allow me to test my components. And what you're gonna start seeing is trends. See how there's a proper channel for this right here? So we're gonna start identifying these kind of things and just gently pulling our cables in those directions. That's gonna help us in the future when we do properly cable manage this case. And there you have it. Our CPU is officially installed. We are now good to go with attaching the thermal solution.